had um, a class of grade four children. And the children were talking about a time that they felt sad because we were helping them understand that we all feel sad and lonely at times, but we can help one another. And um, this little girl out of the blue said, I felt sad when my mommy gave me away because we didn't afford good food. So nobody said anything at the time. And uh, this was in one of the classes that was after the family visit. There's nine family visits, but before each visit, there's a class of, of projecting ahead. And afterwards, there's a reflective class. So this was one of the reflective classes. But the next day, many, many children, most of the children in the class, and this was just a passing comment, most of the children came with food. The majority of the children quietly in the cloakroom gave the food to the little girl. But what was so poignant, some of the children said, this is for your mommy, so your mommy can get you back. So we've, I think, not begun to plumb the depths of the human heart. And it beats, I think, most deeply in our children. These stories that I could share with you about the kindnesses of children and the depth of their compassion uh, are encouragement to all of us. And also the brilliance of babies. There's a lovely story of a little fellow, again a 10-year-old, in a class where we had a baby with cleft lip and uh, cleft palate. And we look for these babies because it's a celebration of our humanity, not what we look like. And uh, of course, the parents learn that all babies are lovable, so they don't need the social worker to help them uh, adjust after the visit. But in this one visit, we had Australian visitors there. And they were at the back of the classroom. And this was a Colombian couple who were um, both doing their PhD at U of T. And um, so the children always interrogate the parents when they first come. Uh, they sit on the green blanket. And uh, they ask the parents, well, what's new since the last visit? What's happened with baby so-and-so? And when they asked the question, so what's happening now? Have you been to the doctor? Because they had to chronicle every doctor's visit. Um, the dad said yes, and they're going to do the first surgery next week. And in that class, there was a little boy who was developmentally delayed, and you wouldn't know. Um, he looked like all the other children, but he would never be able to learn to read. Um, so this, um, one of the children said, how do you feel about the baby going in for the surgery? And the dad said, I feel I'm betraying him because I can't tell him what they're going to do. And I can't help that he's going to feel pain. And we're not allowed to be there when he first wakes up. So he'll be frightened. And they asked the mom, how do you feel about the surgery? And she said, I miss my family. And in a heartbeat, didn't this little developmentally delayed little boy say, we are your family? At which point, one of our visitors from Australia went, <gasps> and the adults wept. Because of the power, the emotional depth of that 10-year-old child who will never read. So what children in Roots of Empathy learn is that emotional literacy crosses all the age and gender barriers. Very often, the little children are more emotionally literate than we are, and I think we as a nation in North America are emotionally illiterate. We worry about our traditional literacy rates, but we should be more worried, I think, about our emotional literacy, our ability to connect to ourselves and to one another.